everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Michelle and you have reached my floss tube channel, Farm Girl. I am so sure you guys get sick of hearing that every video, but um, I do it in the event that someone new stumbles across and um, wonders who the heck I am. I am so happy to finally be doing a video. I haven't done a video because I really haven't been stitching. I kind of took a break. I was making junk journals and let's see and what else oh and I was putting my garden together and just doing stuff around the house there was a couple weeks there I didn't stitch like at all so I just didn't have anything to show you it would have been me and you and just sitting here staring at each other but I will show you my my junk journal so I actually sold one too and I'm working on a gardening one right now um I did, this one is um, for my goats, and it might seem odd to do a journal for your goats, but I like to take pictures of them and from year to year to see how their udders change and how they change physically as they mature. I think it's really helpful, especially with kind of some slower maturing dam lines, which I have one in particular. Um, it helps me remember to stay patient, but... So it's been kind of nice. Um, instead of having to look through my phone, now I have a book that I can put the pictures in. So it's also given me something to do with all the cards that people send me because they see a card with goats on it and they want to send them to me. And I love them and don't want to throw them out, but I want to do something with them. So this one I actually cut off of a card too. Um, they look like little Oberhosleys or maybe they're Alpines. Alpines. But... So this was a card someone sent me and um, I've made a little pocket here on the front of the signature and then it's just kind of random stuff. So here's a little lace pocket and it's a lot of coffee and tea dyed paper. And um, So I took this out of um, an American Dairy Goat Association catalog and I just made it into a little journaling card there and... I have um, some ledger paper here and I made pockets and then in the pockets I have pictures of, so I have one of those little printers that everybody has and it's super handy because I have pictures of my goats that I take of their udders and I take them on the phone, on my phone when I'm milking or, um, so this is Molly and she is a second freshening Freshening means to um, have babies and freshen your milk supply. So her, this is her udder, and then I just took like a full-on body shot of her. And so I can put this in the journal. She's going to have like a little spread here. And then I have some pictures of her as a yearling too and how she's changed, which she has changed a lot. And then I can keep them here year to year, and I have some place where I can just kind of go back and... Um, just kind of helps me remember, oh, well, that's what she looked like as a yearling. And it's just kind of fun. And then I have another, um, some other things in here, like just some cute goat memorabilia and things that I'll put in here. And so that's what this book is for. And um, it was really fun to put together. I love making them. It kind of gives me a creative outlet. And uh, something fun to do with all those paper products and little lace trims and fun things that I have. So that takes up a lot of time making one of those. They are such time suckers. It's unbelievable. On the farm front, what have we got going on here? I have, I think, just one more dough. Looks like two of my doughs didn't settle, which is fine. They're going to be dry yearlings. And um, I have, I'm waiting on one little yearling. She's as big as a house. I'll put a picture of her here. Um, she was a late kid born last May. So she's just now going to be a year. And we usually breed them to have their first babies when they are a year old. So she's right on schedule. But the poor thing, she's getting bigger and bigger. And I don't like it when they're pregnant. And it's really hot outside. That's really hard on them. So... Hoping she has those babies soon. Otherwise, everyone is doing well. Um, we have, um, we did the repairs to our new barn and got everybody moved in just in time because 
our old barn, the roof caved in, in an area where I usually keep my yearlings. So I'm really glad that we made the choice last year and got that done. So the barn is actually going to be coming down this spring. We're still on schedule for that. Henry is getting absolutely ginormous. He's laying on the floor over here. Uh, he is growing like a Great Dane puppy. He's ginormous. We think he's probably going to be about 80 pounds. And he is typical trouble seven-month-old puppy. Um, I haven't done a video because I haven't done a super ton of stitching lately. I have been kind of doing other things. So the past couple weeks, I have been doing a lot of stitching. So I have a few new starts. I have some progress on some old pictures. I have one very measly finish. Not measly, but it's one very small finish. Uh, it was also a new start. So this is Stacy Nash Primitives. And this is part of her Animal Cracker series. They're so cute. So little primrose. It was super easy because it only took three colors. And there he is. So cute. Chubby little bunny. They're pretty easy to finish. You just kind of sew a quarter inch around and then um, just stuff it. So I'm hoping before I see you next time, I have a few things I need to finish. Um, in fact, I have a little baggie here of finishes that I really need to, to do. I have um, a little Blackbird thread keep here. And, oh, and then I have, um, this was a market piece that I got done right away and then I haven't done anything with. So this is a needlework press. No, 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 sampler's not forgotten. Um, rose bouquet, it's called. Let me just try to get everything out of the way here. This. And this is my little finish on it. So I just need to sew that. So I'm hoping I get that all done. I have to feel motivated to do finishing, which I haven't felt super motivated. <laughs> but I'm hoping I'll get those done. Maybe this week sometime or maybe this weekend if the weather isn't fantastic. But I have been doing some other things. I have not been sitting idle. I wanted to say a big um, thank you and shout out to all the designers that participated in the Be Well and Stitch kind of campaign that was going around Instagram. Um, that was really heartwarming that as a community, the designers would take such good care of us and make those little projects for us. And I saw a lot of people stitching them. I did choose one. Um, it is by Needlework Press. And I forgot to bring the pattern up here with me, but it's available on Needlework Press's Facebook group. <sighs> I don't know why I didn't stitch it in the DMC because it is, um, I am not gifted in the way of conversions at all. So I did start it and I hate my color choice. So I'm going to be um, starting it over. What I really hate is that I wasted part of a piece of Lakeside Vintage Meadow Rue. I mean, not much, but I could have stitched something on here. So I'm afraid I'm not tearing that out. So I, I'm afraid that this is just going to um, get cut out and go in the garbage, but it's a coveted piece of fabric and I botched it pretty good. I am not gifted. What was I thinking? It's so not cute. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull it out and I'm just going to do um, the DMC conversion because, I mean, I don't need fancy floss. It just makes me crazy that I, <laughs> that I did that. What a waste. There was also one other pattern that I had to do some converting on. And this is actually my third start. Sorry, Henry's rolling over there. You comfy, buddy? So this was a pattern that was gifted to me by Brenda Gervais. It's not a pattern that is available. And I've started it. This will be my third time. The first time, what I did is I pulled, because Brenda charts everything in DMC and then converts. She pulls over dyed threads for it as she goes. And so I thought, oh, great, I can do that. So I pulled the DMC and I started with the border and I didn't like my fabric choice and I didn't like the color that I chose it was I felt like it was too dark so I started it over and started over with new fabric and um didn't like 
the border color again when I switched it. And so I just put it away for a little bit. So I pulled it out again. And this time I thought I'm not going to pull the DMC. <laughs> okay, Brenda, if you're watching, just pause. Fast forward five minutes. <laughs> fast forward five minutes. Plug your ears. She's going to be horrified when I say this. So the next time, because I struggled so much with trying to find, the overdyed part gets me. Like, it just gets me. And I am not good at finding colors that contrast with each other in overdyes. I just, I end up either picking something that has too much contrast or not enough. So what I did, so here's the picture of the chart. I think it's super cute. I don't know why I'm getting so much glare. Okay, so here it is. It's damn adorable. I like the colors that are on here. So I pulled threads to match. Actually, to match the chart. I did a good job. Like, look at how well they... <laughs> right? I did a good job there. Okay, but so here... And I don't hate this. But I still feel like I can do better. Um, I should have used a little bit brighter white for Chloe. but Or that's who I'm modeling that after. My beautiful Chloe. If you don't know who Chloe is, she was my favorite goat. And she had some complications um, during kidding season last year. And I lost her. So, But she's forever in my heart. So um, I feel like I did a good job with the border this time. I really like it. And I like the greens. I like the blues. I wish I would have chosen a little darker fabric. So I love this so much. I don't, this to me is not like frame worthy. So I'm going to make a small finish probably to set on my desk or something. And then I'm going to, when the shops open up again, I think I'm going to go and do a proper pick out fabric, pick out floss um, in a shop where I have kind of an endless supply and I'm not limited to um, kind of just what I have on hand. But it's so cute. I stitched that in just a couple days. So it's a pretty quick stitch. And um, that this one is definitely worth um, stitching twice for me. But it's really sweet. I love it. Love it. So cute. So cute. So I still have to put the beard on. And I was not sure... I might do this one and put a beard on and put um, the horns on. And then when I restitch it, I'm going to try and lighten up the face a little bit here. And I'll leave the horns off because Chloe didn't have horns. But otherwise, love it. Love it. Love it. So I've been having a lot of fun here. Is the floss colors I chose. Um, like I said, it was just kind of what I had on my leftover bundles of floss. Um, on my on my floss rings that are not currently in kits, I would assume that the most the majority of my thread is tied up in kits. So I don't randomly buy floss for the most part. I just kit up projects, and um, I had a system where I was using like the floss away bags, and then like these sh they look kind of like shoe boxes that I got from IKEA. And I was storing them all in there according to manufacturer. But it got to be kind of a pain because I have dinky dyes and other silks and color and cottons, Weeks Dye Works, um, Classic Color Works, and Gentle Arts. And all the boxes look the same. So every time I wanted one, and you think I'd write the name on it, but I didn't. So every time I wanted one or like Gentle Arts and Weeks had two boxes and it was just so tedious trying to find anything. So um, I can remember a long time ago watching a video um, of Jennifer from Jen Stitching Niche and she had all of her floss on rings and then she had just in a basket and I thought that is the craziest system I've ever seen. Like that's, I mean, how do you do that? Well, definitely. I mean, I learn a lot from watching Floss Tube and um, my theory on that has really changed. I think it's brilliant. So I went ahead and I put everything on all of my extra, you know, my stuff that isn't kitted, all of my thread on the big, big floss rings. 
um, big, they're book rings actually like this, but they're like four inch size, I think. And I put them all on the rings and I have this hospital cart that I bought my husband when he had his surgery. And now I use it for cross stitching because I primarily cross stitch in bed at night when I'm done with my chores and kind of winding down for the evening, I lay in bed and stitch and um, I've mentioned before, my Lowry stand fits in between my mattresses and the the tray is really nice because it um, comes over your bed. And so I have a little thing there that holds my pattern and that has these adjustable knobs and I just hang all of my thread from those adjustable knobs. So I'll post a picture of that here. It's just been um, super handy. Um, it's been, I guess it's kind of lack of, well, it is organized, but it's like less organized than it was. And I think that that's what I needed because the way that I had my floss before it was tedious and it was kind of a pain to find things. So I'm really enjoying this. It's just so much quicker. And if I need to substitute a floss, I always have all of my extra floss right there. So it's fantastic. So those have been... Um, some of my smaller projects and I think for the most part everything else I have is kind of bigger projects so I'm gonna show you next my Harry Elizabeth Co for the Harry Elizabeth Co sale the eyelets I'm not gonna lie they're getting to me um, I don't think it's necessarily the eyelets I think it's this project in general I've just made so many mistakes on it like I have torn I I've probably stitched it twice with all the um, I'm pretty sure I've torn out at least an entire skein of endive, maybe even a 10 yard skein, <laughs> skein of endive. I don't know why I keep making mistakes if it's just um, not paying attention or what, but I love this so much. I really love stitching on it. So I'm stitching it two over two on, um, I believe it's the called for fabric, which is like a winter's, um, it's an R&R &R winter's brew, I believe. Old Town Blend. Old Town Blend, and it's so pretty. I'm so close. And when I stitch, Brenda suggested I just do an, a, a letter a day and get it done with. And I actually haven't, which I was doing that. And then, um, and then I haven't stitched for the last couple days, so I'm a little behind already. But I did finally get the top row all done, and then I just have, um. P, Q, R here, and X and Z, and then there's a little motif there. So I'm super close. I got the um, little strawberry border finish. I, I just love this. It's so cute. The colors are so pretty. I have so many mistakes in here. I don't even know. And that, I think that's what it is. It's like, it's kind of a mind blocker when I know where I'm at right down here that there's a couple of mistakes, like very known mistakes that I worry um, if I'm going to be able to fit Harriet Elizabeth Co in here. I know I will logically, but it's just the idea of having to reposition things, which I'm not going to have to do. So I just need to get it over with and get it done. But um, I love it. It's so really um, thick because I'm using two strands on the 32 count. And I, it's fascinating to me how well it matches um, the original. It's almost like Brenda scanned this and printed it onto the chart. But it's a fantastic color match. So that makes me really happy. But it's really pretty. It's fun. It should The chart should be more readily available now. I know when I started the sale, it was, I think it was like around, yes, it was around Christmas and Brenda had her shop closed so nobody could really order from her. <laughs> And you couldn't order from her because her shop was closed. And um, but that that should be different now. I think there's a lot of shops who have it in stock again, and um, so it should be pretty easy to track it down. Okay, and then next I have an update on this is token a token of love. Token of Love. This is the one that I did the tutorial, the one over one tutorial on. So I just wanted to address a couple things. One, um, I'll put a picture of the chart in here because Henry ain't mine. And I'm actually, 
um, having to borrow a friend's, a couple pages from a friend's pattern um, to finish stitching it because he chewed it up. So I have the hoop. I got a lot of questions and I did answer it about five times before I just got tired of answering it thought I'll just address it in my next video because um, it was a question that I got over and over and over again in that video. So, and the reason why I didn't link it in the video because I had mentioned I would um, show it and then I didn't because I realized it's kind of misleading. So I was using it for the tutorial because it's on a stand, but I didn't want to say that I use it for cross stitching because I actually don't. Um, I just haven't, I'm working on it now because I didn't have a Q-snap that worked well with this for my Lowry stand. So I am using it to stitch this, but I don't keep it. So I'll post a picture here of what it looks like um, assembled. And what I actually use this for is punch needle, not cross stitch. So I just wanted to clarify that that's why I didn't post that there is, it's called a Morgan hoop. Um, but it, and it was great because I had it on the stand so that I didn't have to hold my camera and it just worked out better for a tutorial using this hoop but I don't use it in general to cross stitch. So, and it is kind of pricey for that. So I didn't want people running out, spending 50, $60 on this hoop and then being like, well, Michelle. So that's that, but, oh, but let me show you my progress. Give you a close up of that. And I think this is what I was, the motif that I was stitching in the video and the variegation is just really pretty. I love this. I'm, I think I'm just over the halfway mark just really pretty and then this is the the chart that fits inside the three drawer wooden box um the other thing is i had a ton of people message me on instagram asking me for the link for the box and um i actually did post the link in the video so if you check the description box oftentimes you will find it there and then when it's sold out it's sold out there's no, I don't have any magic connections to be able to get it. It's, I keep getting messages where I got it, if I can help people find it. And it's, I, it's legitimately like sold out all over the world now. Brenda had them available on her site. She sold out too. It looks like, I don't know if the manufacturer is making them anymore, but I tried to check Doris's website and I think that I didn't even see them there. So I don't know. If it's something that they're going to bring back or not, I hope so because I actually wanted to get it. Um, I saw another little project from Stacy Nash that uses that box that um, not anything stitched in it. She just uses it as a little box, but she had it painted red. It was super cute. So I'd kind of like another one to paint um, red. Okay, and then my next... A uh, project that I worked on is Martha Pudsey. I love this so much. This has been fun. So normally I work on this on Wednesdays when I um, chat with some stitchy friends. We sit around um, in video chat. Uh, it's easy because the border is very easily memorized. And I have started on some of the inside motifs, which I don't think I had started on those yet. Um, I'm using the silks. Silks, these are lovely to work with. Super pretty. And they're so soft. They are, um, are these NPIs? Let me see. Yes, these are NPIs. Um, I love them. They don't get fuzzy, like, at all. They have a, it's... I don't know how to say it other than in knitting terms. It's like they have a really long staple and kind of a high twist to them. I But I just, they're really, I wasn't sure. They are very staticky, I will say that. And I wasn't sure how much I love them when I first started stitching with them until I went to a different um, cotton again and then went back to them. And they are really nice. So I haven't used enough silk, to be honest, to have a favorite, but I think that, no, or is NPIs, is that what Brenda 
from Brenda and the Cereal Starter. I think NPIs are her favorites, and I can see why she says that. Um, they're pretty, pretty enjoyable. I like them a lot. Very nice and soft, and they're like butter moving through your fabric. So if you have a chance, get a skein or two and try them out for sure. So my Martha is stitched. Um, I'm using a 36 count Oaken from Picture This Plus. And I really love the colors on it. I really love it. It's the perfect choice, I think. And so I've just started. Um, I'm down to the basket. So once... I'm pretty optimistic, but you know, I feel like I'm to the halfway point. The border is extra. <laughs> the border is so extra. I guess I'm not quite to the halfway point, but the border is you have to go around three times because it's like a red border and then a green border and then a red border. And it's, um, it's a lot, but at least then the leaves. And I think I had mentioned that I did the leaves all 48 of them in the wrong color and I frogged them all out. And restitched them in the right color, and I'm much, I'm so glad I did that because I would not have liked it otherwise. Um, because it's the green matches what's in the flower stem here. And then it's pretty easily memorized the border pattern, so it's really easy to stitch when you're chatting with friends or whatever. So now the only yucky thing is everything here stitched is duplicated. Um, in a mirror image on this side. So that's kind of got me at a standstill because who likes to stitch things twice? But it went really fast. I think it only just took me a couple evenings to stitch those. So in the berry basket, I really like, so I don't mind stitching that twice at all. And I won't mind the cherub here. And then this is different. Um, and then once I get past that, then everything else is um, always going to be super fun and pretty easy. I don't know. The motifs go really fast. It's the border that takes a long time. I mean, once you get those motifs going, they're like nothing. But that border is something else. But I really enjoy stitching on it. I'm not in a rush. I'm just enjoying pulling it out on days. I just need kind of something not quite mindless. Um, if I, if I need mindless stitching, I do pull it out and I work on the border and that works great. I love stitching borders. I probably prefer to do the borders over the motifs. Then I have, um, a new start. So I've, I've seen this pattern at country pattern, uh, country pattern, at country sampler, um, stitched. And I love the pattern in general. It's a sampler's not forgotten. And I have a lot of samplers not forgotten and I've never stitched one of their samplers, but I've done a few of her smalls. This one is your grand old flag. And um, Jeannie did a conversion on this, which it uses the same fabric, I think. Oh no. Yes, it uses the same fabric, but she actually did a floss conversion and kind of toned down and primmed up the colors. And I'll be honest, I have um, this chart in duplicate because I didn't think I owned the chart already. And so when I called her and asked her to kit this up for me and to send me the kit, I didn't realize I already had it kitted. Ugh, so frustrating. But I had it kitted in um, the called for colors. So, um, and I really wanted to do it in her conversion. So I did take a picture and I did, I showed it on a story on Instagram. So I'm going to post a picture here. This is, um, so you can see the brighter colors are the called for and the kind of toned down muted colors is Jeannie's conversion. So, and I'm not going to give that out. If you would like the conversion, you can um, call up Country Sampler and I'm sure they'll be happy to send you the threads for that. But it's just so pretty. I really love it. So I I got it in the mail and I'm so excited. And it's patriotic stitching time. And so I started it. So here's all the pretty floss. I love them. Don't you think they're just so pretty and muted? And they're all cottons. Really nice. 
And here is, I only worked on this for, I think in two evenings. So I don't have a ton done. I love the fabric. So this is what I've gotten done. And let me see if I can get my act together here. Okay. So you can see the red is very pretty and I love the kind of washed out and blue tones there. Um, the roof is actually two different colors and you can see there's just like a subtle pattern to the roof, which I don't know if it's, I think it primarily has to do with the way that I stitched it because I didn't have any really rhyme or reason. I kind of contemplated pulling it out and stitching straight across because I was stitching in hand. I would go like this and then I'd come back and do this and sometimes I do rows down like this. So it kind of lost any sense of pattern. It's, even though it was already going to be subtle, I think that um, I kind of ruined any hope of doing that. I'm sorry. I think someone just got home, so they're barking their little heads off. Um, anyway, so I kind of lost the variegation, but and but I did get this kind of heathered look, and honestly, that doesn't bother me, and I don't care enough to rip it out. So, um, but if you choose to um, stitch this pattern, just be mindful of that. I, I'm sure probably everyone has some sense of order to their stitching when they would do this, and I just didn't. But I didn't. It's fine. It's all fine. It's fine. Otherwise, I really love it. Um, I don't think it will. I love a house. So, but the house is every other square. So it is a little putzier than your average house. Um, but lots of windows and it's just so pretty. Um, yeah, I really, really have enjoyed this. So I'm looking forward to getting back to that. And then I'm hoping to make us a, a quick video. And I think it might be. Oh, I have one more project to show you. And then just a little bit of haul. This I'm so excited about. So this was a mania start for me. I think it was a couple years ago now. So this is... Um, American Sampler by Plum Street Samplers. My pattern was stuck to the vinyl in my um, project bag, so it's kind of yucky. But it's just so cute. This was a retreat piece for a dying to stitch retreat probably, probably four or five years ago now, maybe even longer. Um, so one of those, you know, that you have to wait a year for it to come out, but so worth her retreat piece again for this year and um, I think it was the, she just did a video about um, the piece that she's releasing which I want to say it was linen and threads the shop linen and threads is that what's called the uh, Australian shop that Paulette did a retreat there how fabulous is that they seem to be kind of a series they go really well together there and they just keep getting better and better and better I can't wait um, what was that one called I don't know. I'll post pictures of them here so you can, so you can figure out what I'm talking about. But so here is my progress and I will show you um I'll do a split screen here and show you where I started and what I stitched in 3 days. I think that this stitch probably cuz it's a house and I'm obsessed with houses, but um it really does stitch up quickly. But I did have most of that roof done and Originally, I had this border done all the way across and made a mistake and had to tear it all out. And that just kind of um, put this one on the back burner for me because I hate ripping stuff out. And once it, it's like it's tainted once it gets a mistake, even after I fix it. And the other thing I don't do is I never put anything away with a mistake. Even if I'm like, oh, I'm so frustrated. I don't want to work on it anymore. I pull it out so that I know that the next time I picked it up. I don't have to pick anything up out. Otherwise, I'd probably never pick it up again. So I just had this started and I filled all that in. And I finished the flag and finished the roof and um, and then did all this brickwork. And then this whole house, 
the gray behind the flower in the window. I did in one Zoom meeting, so it just took a couple hours to do, and then that evening I did all this grass. So that stitching, when you use the sewing method, and you have big block stitching like this, it goes super, super, super fast. So you can really get a lot done. But this is, oh, this is so beautiful. I love it. The more I get done on it, the more I absolutely love it. That brickwork is so fun to do. It's super easy. It's just, oh, I love everything about this. It's beautiful. How fun is that going to be? And it's a big piece. There's um, a saying here, all goes... Like my fabric is just big enough to fit it. I'm hoping, I I'm, I think I'll have about an inch and a half when I'm done here, but I'll go all the way across. And then I think I only have, yes, because I wanna say like the halfway point is about right here. So that's a lot. I still have a lot to go over here. The tree. The tree, see that takes up a lot of space there. How fabulous is that? It's just, it's so big, it's so pretty, it's so fabulous. I love this, love this, love this. So that's all I have for my stitching. Um, I do have some fun things I got in the mail. I don't think I showed this to you. Oh, hi Henry, are you done causing a ruckus? Hi Dookie. So um, I bought Isabella Fox. I bought this on 123 Stitch. And you know that button where you can like add all the floss? So I put the chart in my cart and then I went back, hit the button to add all the floss and forgot to add, um, remove the second chart. So I actually accidentally ended up buying two of them. But, and I don't think I had all the floss. I think they were missing some, but um, it's, it's kind of an interesting color palette when you look at it this way. <clears throat> right? <laughs> but I still need to find fabric for this. When I bought this too, I thought, oh yay, no freaking alphabet. I'm so sick of stitching alphabets. I don't ever want to stitch another alphabet again. But I was looking at the pattern and I'll be darned, look it, there's a dang alphabet in there. Slid that in under there. I don't know how I missed that. There's actually a lot, quite a few words in here because then there's this whole line down here and then you can barely see it. But do you see there's a verse here and here? It's very deceiving. I was very misled with this one, but it's so pretty. Although these, co these colors, I'll be honest, they make me nervous. But, um, oh, and then I also got from Jen at Jen Stitching Niche. Oh, here's the pattern for the needlework press piece that I was doing. And this is available in her Facebook group as a download. She had it on her blog, but it wasn't printing correctly. So now it's only available in the Facebook group. But um, so just look needlework press on Facebook and then you can print it out right out from there. Um, it's charted in DMC, which I'm going to stitch it in DMC. Then um, Jen Stitching Niche posted on Instagram that um, she had these in stock and Blackbird Design had reprinted them, which I'm super stoked about. These are summer, winter, autumn. Definitely something I would have laid down a chunk of change for on eBay. I'm super glad I didn't have to. And I didn't even have to pay shipping because Jen has free shipping on $35 and over and the charts are $12. So it was um, free shipping. So go check out Jen's Stitching Niche. Then I also saw someone on Stitch Mania who posted um, a picture of her, like her oldest whip. And I think she, and I'm sorry, I don't remember who it was if you happen to um, be watching, but she was stitching this pattern and she had been stitching it for like 20 years or something like that. Um, but I thought it was super cute. It was out of print. It took me a couple weeks to find it, but um, I did find it. It's so cute. It's called American Folk Art by Boyd Designs. And I love it. But the bread barn is my favorite there. Look at that. Look at the church. I love that. And then the best part is all that green, it's not stitched. You stitch it on green fabric. So the background here is stitched and then the water up here is. 
but I really like that. So I was super stoked to find that. The only thing I don't like, it's all like one a chart like this. Which I do not enjoy. Then I got my order from Color and Cotton. Um, Angela was, she's changing out her floss tags to be more in line with what um, like general arts and classic color works do. So she obviously didn't want to um, recard all this thread onto new. So she just had a sale. So she had a sale. I partook. I got lots of um, beautiful. Her floss is very pretty. It's very plump. Um, whatever process she uses to dye is uh, lovely and makes a very nice floss to work with. And um, I'm trying to think. If her skeins are, they're priced about the same as an overdyed for us, like Weeks and Gentle Arts, but they're eight yards, which is the same amount of floss that's in a skein of DMC. So you get more for um, less money. Like this is typewriter, the color of this one. And it's just beautiful. It's got subtle variegation in this one. Some of them have more, some of them have less. Um, she has an extensive. A uh, colorway or, or uh, color line, so she has lots and lots of choices, and she has a website, so you can check her out. Color and Cotton, and it's um, color C O L O U R and Cotton C O T T O N. I'll post the link down below. Um, on Amazon, if you saw my um, Instagram story, so a lot of times I show. A lot of products that I buy as I get them, I show them because I do, I do these YouTube videos so infrequently that sometimes I don't even show stuff that I bought, but I have shown it on Instagram. So, um, and you can find me on Instagram at Farm Girl Loves Goats. I'll scroll it across here and I'll post the link below. But these were, um, I was actually reorganizing my office and I was looking for file folders and I wanted pretty ones. So I was searching floral fiber uh, file folders and these popped up and they are fabric and, but they would make really great inexpensive project bags. I think I paid, it was a set of four and I think they were $8.99. So $2.25 each, which is super reasonable. Um, they are felt lined and they have a little button enclosure and then this, just this little lace detail on it. And they're just the fabric on the back. I mean, they're not super high quality, but um, they've got little fuzzies and stuff. But they're they're pretty and they would work just fine. So all the four of them. This one and this one. So I'm actually probably going to use them because I have so many project bags. I'm actually probably going to use them as file folders. Um, I'll store my tax returns in them, but I thought I would uh, share those with you. So if you did a Google search or um, a search on Amazon for floral file folders, you should be able to find those. And then I have um, my one of my club kits. So this is a dying to stitch. I'm part of two clubs. I can't remember. I think they're full now. You have to sign up for them uh, at the beginning of the year. Once I, I'm pretty sure that once they start shipping, they don't take more, but you can try if you're interested and give Dying to Stitch a call. Um, this is the Quaint Country Ladies. So last year it was, uh, it was also Pineberry Lanes, but it was all Christmas themed, which I loved those. And this year, I mean, let's be real. What Pineberry Lanes does best is Halloween. So the fact that the whole year is going to be Halloween is fantastic. And um, this did not disappoint. It's so cute. It's great. It comes with everything, all the finishing materials. So there was this wool and the little black pom-pom trim. And this fabric I love. So it's all R&R. R&R is hang to stitch is the home to R&R fabric. So Pat dyes. I believe Pat dyes the fabric. I don't know. Maybe Ann does too. I don't know. I have no idea. I don't know why I assume Pat does it. <laughs> but anyways, this is one of their fabrics. It is so, it's really pretty. It's Liberty, Liberty Gathering Gray Linen. And it's a great kind of 
taupey-ish gray. I really like it. I think I might order some of this. It's like a stone gray, but it's very pretty. I love it. And perfect for this piece. It's fantastic. I wonder if that would be a good color for Jack's bash. But there it is. So I'm um, looking forward to getting that started. And while I'm on the topic of dying to stitch, I had some stitchy kindness too. Um, speaking of Anne, I had posted on a Facebook that um, I had a question about uh, a chart. It's called A Noble Pursuit. It was a 2006 need Nashville Needlework exclusive, and it was 10 different designers that each did a part um, for the sampler and it's no longer available. It's incredibly hard to find. And she asked me if I wanted it, said she had a copy of it. And I said, yes. And then please send me um, the new Project Quarantine chart also from Brenda Gervais, which I also ordered. And, um, and then let me know what I owe and you can send it with my next club kit, whatever. And she said, nope, this is from my personal stash. I'm sending it to you. And I about fell on the floor. So this one is oh, another one that I've just been really wanting for a really long time, but it's, I have um, a Facebook search for it and it very rarely comes up. And when it does, it goes for astronomical amounts of money, but it's so fantastic. So it's Primitive Traditions, Hands to Work, Bright Needle, The Work Basket, Praiseworthy Stitches, Patricia and Designs, With My Needle, Lottie Da, Stitch and a Prayer, and Carriage All Samplings. And it's just fantastic. Um, and I cannot thank you enough. I don't know what I did to deserve that, but um, I love it. And I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. I don't even know what to say. This is um, This was so kind. So thank you so very much. Um, and in a time where shops are struggling right now um, and retailers are struggling to um, to just be that kind, um, I don't know, it was really overwhelming to me. So I appreciate it so much. And my last bit of stitchy kindness from April, April in Alabama on Instagram. And then you can find her um, at Homestead Needlework on Etsy and I'm just going to put her you can see it right here Homestead Needlework and let me show you her card there it is there um so she did those fantastic butter boards for I think this is the third or fourth one now that she's done with um Tanya of the Scarlet House so this is for what is it a little red I'm going to post a picture of it here um on the board a little um this little board fits is specifically designed for stitching that little sampler um in a 40 40 count and she gifted this to me she was so kind that she sent another one for you guys so um if you would like to be considered um for this you just need to uh, my channel is not for anyone under the age of 18, so you must be 18, and um, you have to use a sentence with the word board in it, B-O-A-R-D, um, and then uh, this will go out my next video, and um, speaking of giveaways too, I think I got everything out and I'm so, so sorry that that took so long to do for those of you that had... Um, that won any of the giveaways that was just really overwhelming and I got a little carried away giving stuff away and I didn't have a good system and I had to go back and watch a lot of videos um to figure them out and ugh, that was terrible I have learned a valuable lesson from that so um I wouldn't be surprised if I forgot someone. So if you were expecting something and you didn't and you emailed me please email me again I'm going to put my email down in the description box um, just let me know and, uh, let me know what it was that you won and I'll be happy to get that out for you. And again, my apologies if I missed you. I certainly didn't mean to. That just kind of took off. Um, and, um, it was just a little too numerous. So I don't know how people who do a ton of giveaways keep it all organized, but I did not have a good system. In any case, I'll make sure that this gets out in a very timely manner. And, um, and then April, I also want to show April makes other pro products in her shop. 
She has these cute little kind of mini quilt holders. Um, I love this. I have a Prairie Schooler Santa that my, I think my daughter, my oldest daughter stitched this and it's stitched on like a, I think this is a Clostern maybe, Clostern or a Tula fabric, but um, I just made it into a little wall hanging with a Buffalo check fabric and I just hangs on here. The hanger has a little sawtooth hanger there so it hangs on the wall easily and then you just adjust it by turning this knob and they come in an array of different colors they're super cute and she's got a lot of other stuff in her shop too so check her out I'm going to post um her Instagram the link to her Instagram below as well and oh and then I wanted to show you I sent them back here so um I took up basket weaving <laughs> I know I had too much time on my hands sometimes I think um but I ordered a couple kits and I took up basket weaving, so I wanted to show you. So this is, um, it's actually still kind of wet because I just stained it this morning. Um, but I made this little, it's like, I think it's, I, I bought these kits from um, Joanna's Collectibles. She's local here in Minnesota from Stacy, a little bit north of me. But this was a, um, a letter box, I think. So this is going to go in my kitchen. Um, it smells pretty strong. I just stained it with Minwax, but I had a lot of fun. Um, it wasn't difficult, but I now have bought so much material. I could make a thousand of these now with all this stuff. It turns out there's actually a basket weaving shop or a shop. They're not basket weaving. They make like wicker furniture and stuff, but they're in St. Paul. And um, I just placed a phone order today and I had Josh go pick it up. So now I can make like four million baskets. But I did also, I don't really want to touch anything. But I also got this kit and it is for a market basket. And this is what I did this afternoon. And I love it. It's a super nice size. It's still damp. Um, it's still wet and pretty pliable because I literally finished it about an hour ago. Um, it's got a really nice handle. It's pretty substantial. It's really nice. Like everything else, I have um, figured that I am, I am also a tight, a tight weaver apparently as well. So I had to be mindful when I was making the basket not to have it um, kind of turn inwards. So, because I have a tendency to just be like intense and want to pull everything really tight. But it turned out beautifully. There's my bottom. I do still need a little practice getting these, you know, together to lay tight. But I'm super happy with it. Today, I, I also ordered two more kits from her. So, she has um, a tote with leather straps. I ordered, so I ordered that. And then I also ordered the wool basket kit. Um, it's like for rug hookers. So I'm looking for it. So it's a big basket. Um, her prices are pretty reasonable. They're not super way out there. Um, it does not, they don't really come with, they, they come with a pattern, not really instructions. So that was a little bit tricky trying to having never made a basket before trying to figure out something like this but I got it together once I got this small one together this one I figured out pretty easily so um and then what else did I oh and then I ordered four patterns you can also buy her patterns for five dollars on her website and then I got a bunch of reed from the guy in St. Paul and some handles so I'm going to actually make another handle like this it'll be a little bit taller but it'll be a market basket and it'll be tall and round <laughs> I'm gonna have baskets everywhere my husband thinks I'm hilarious he's like he told me today he's like I love how you just um decide to do something and you just like you go at it with a vengeance <laughs> I'm glad that he's so supportive he likes the baskets because they're practical and um Actually, I bought the kits for him because he, he desperately needs a hobby, but he didn't seem too interested in it. So, so there I go. And these actually fit my, oh, Dukas. 
these fit like project bags and stuff really nice. This is a really nice size for that. So hopefully I'll have a couple more baskets to show you next time. But that's all I've got for now. I hope you're having a great week and we will see you next time. Bye.